Hi guys, Steve here. On this video, I'm gonna show you the best places to build your first outpost, plus give you all the information you need to build your outpost. And when you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe, thank you. I spent hours going to every system and scanning every main planet with resources around Alpha Centauri. I'm first going to show you how to build an outpost on a nice simple planet with most of the basic resources you need. Then once you understand what you need and what to do, I'm going to show you the five best starting planets to build on at the end. Or you could just skip to the end if you're just here to find the best planets. First you need to go to the Alpha Centauri system to buy some resources. We're going to Jemson, the first main city you get to. When you landed, take the main walkway. Go around to the left, you see a building in front of you, called Jemson Mercantile. Talk to the woman behind the counter, see what she has for sale. Scroll down to resources. Now because I'm at the start of a game and I don't have anything, I need to buy the following. Adaptive frames to get you started, but you can make them once you get the outpost up. Aluminium. Beryllium. Copper, that's important, you need loads of that. Fiber, iron, lead, nickel, sealant, structural material, tungsten, and zero wire. They're all the resources you want and this shop sells most of them. But if you've played the game for a while and you've collected resources over time, if you've got the ones you need you won't have to buy so many. Now you could find a chair, sit down and wait 24 hours for this shop to reset. Then buy all the same items again. Copper is the main one you're going to run out of. But instead we're going to go to the Cheyenne system. And go to Aquila City. Another place you can buy resources from. Go to the centre of town, the main buildings in the centre. And on the left you've got Midtown Minerals. Go in there. Talk to the woman on the right. Welcome to the best. Let me know if you need anything. And buy all the same resources you've just brought from your other place. She only sells metal and rocks, so there's no refined or built stuff. Unlike the other store which is better. But this will be enough to start us going. Once you've brought everything, go back to your ship again. As you're a beginner, I'm going to go to a good simple planet with all the basic resources you need. Because it's basic, it's easy for you to learn and understand what to do. Instead of starting off on the best planets, that are more complicated and a lot harder to set up on, which would make the tutorial harder and more confusing. But once you've watched this video, you'll know how to set up an outpost, so you can then build on the very best planets that I'll show at the end. As you're a beginner, the easiest planet to set up on is in the Narion system, and everyone's favourite moon, Andraphon. Jump there, then scan it. And it's got Helium 3, so you can power interstellar cargo links, Aluminium, Aluminum, Iron, and Brillium. Now what we're going to do next is very important, as we're going to try and find an area with all of the four resources. Move your view around a planet until you find an area with three of the resources you want close together within your white round circle. This works as a rough guide to tell you where the resources are. The resource layout is procedurally generated, so different for each people's games. I'm going to click on the ground, and you notice in the box on the right hand side it says mountains. You'll find iron in mountains and aluminum in craters. And you need to get right in between where mountains and craters meet up. For example, you start on one side, and then slowly move and click to the other, and you click mountains, mountains, mountains. Then when you get to craters, stop. Click X to land, because that's the area you need to check to see if it's right on the border, between the two sets of minerals. I'm demonstrating building an outpost on this planet because it's nice and simple. It's basic and has only two different land types, mountains and craters, where the other planets have three, four or five types of land. And trying to find all those borders intersecting into a junction on your first outpost might be a bit tricky. Again, that's why I picked this simple planet instead of a better one. But it's still good to get you started as it has most of the stuff you need. Now you've landed, leave your ship. And you're looking for different terrain types. Here we've got a sandy ground with rocks on a low ground. 
and in the distance you can see grey mountains. That's the border you're looking for, where two different resource types are butting up together. Here we're in the craters, so we find aluminium here, aluminium. But when we step over on the grey mountain ground, we'll find iron. So we need to build our base in between the two. So we get both resource types. Mine any minerals you find on the rocks, as you might need them to build later. Then when you get to the border where both land types join, open up your scanner and press R to bring out your outpost beacon. When you place that down, you'll be able to build your base around it. However, it has an important secondary function as a scanner with a wide radius. As if you look in the top left, it will tell you how many resources are in the area of the outpost beacon. And at the moment, two resources are in range, helium and iron. From your scan when you're above a planet, you also know that there will be aluminum and beryllium. So what you want to do next is walk up the border between the mountain and the crater area, where the two land types meet, and try and find an area where you get all four resource types. Here we found three of the four, we just need beryllium now. So keep going. I went as far as I could one way until it was just all mountains and only found three. So I doubled back and went down the border the opposite way. There's three and there's four. Excellent. Right, let's try and find the best spot for four. Over up here. Next thing you need to do is save because you don't want to lose this location. Then when you bring out a beacon again, you can find the four resources straight away. And you want to move a beacon around to get a good amount of all four resources in your base area. It shows all four are around the beacon, but there might be just a sliver of resources and not enough to put an extractor down. When you think you've found a good area, press E and put the beacon down. Now you see the yellow boxes on the right hand side? That shows only three extractors. That means there isn't enough of one resource to put down an extractor for it. In that case, the easiest option is just to load the previous save you did. And then put down the outpost beacon again. Let's try over there. There we go, we've got four extractors on the right this time. Select the extractor you want to place down, and then press V, and it'll give you an overhead view. Go around the outskirts of the circle. You can try and use your hand scanner to find the resources, but it usually takes a lot longer and there's a hell of a lot of walking around to do. So I found this method to be faster. I found enough resources for all the other extractors, but when I got to iron, there was only enough space to put one down, which isn't enough. So I reloaded my save and tried again. I moved the outpost beacon more into the iron section which worked, and gave me enough to put three down. But when I got to Brilliant, there was only a sliver and enough to put one extractor down. So back to reloading the save again. This is what it's really like to build an outpost, just trial and error until you get it right. And you can see what it's like with this good basic planet with just four resources. So you can imagine how tricky it is if I chose a better planet with five, six or seven resources. Okay, I'll move the beacon around until I've got helium, aluminium, and beryllium. Then we've got iron, so I'll move further into iron. Place the beacon down. And let's start putting the extractors down. Press V. We've got plenty of beryllium now. Put it right at the edge, as there's a circle radius around it, stopping you from putting others down. And you want to leave room to get as many in as you can. Enough to put three or four, just do three for now. Then switch to the next extractor and go round and try and find that resource. Then we've got iron. Another three. Now aluminum. Try and get close as you can. You only need to put one helium extractor down at the start to save your resources. You can also see where the resources are 
If you have the extractor selected, you're in the normal first person view, look around and you might be able to see it in a distance. If there's loads of hills, it might be below the ridge line, but it should be an easy way to find them. Just one of them. Next, I'm going to go back to my outpost beacon. Bring up the build menu. And I'm going to put down a chair. Press the arrow key to select what type. That will do. I'm going to sit down to make it daytime because it's a bit dark in here. The chair will come in useful later as well. So see when it's light. Okay, that's better. Now our outpost needs power. Go to the extractors, either aluminum or iron. We're not working at the moment. Hold down E on them. And they need five power each. Bring up your build menu. Go to power. I'm going to select the solar panel as they give out six power. And just put it to the side of the extractors. Don't put it in front of them because it'll block your view and you'll be unable to see the extractor behind them if you're at a distance in first person view when you want to connect everything together. Sometimes when you put them down it powers up your extractor straight away. Other times you've got to connect the power wire from the solar panel to the extractor. To do that go up to the solar panel, hold down E, scroll down to wire and once it's selected connect it up to the extractor. Then you'll start bringing in extra resources. As you're walking around, don't forget to mine any spare resources lying around. It will help you have enough until you've got everything set up. Iron and aluminum are the first extractors you need to put solar panels onto, because they give you the basic resources to build the rest of the base. Each solar panel gives you six power, so there's one power excess. It's easiest just to put down one solar panel for every extractor. If it doesn't start up, connect the wire to the extractor. You'll hear a humming as the engine starts and the base unit will start moving up and down then later the big piston after you've got the iron and aluminum extractors working then put your solar panels on beryllium and helium last this one's not that important so you can leave it for later if you want but if you want to power it just put one solar down for now when you run out of resources Go back and sit on your chair, rest for a few hours, and the extractors will farm you more to use. You will need adaptive frames to build stuff. To make them, open up your build menu, go to crafting and select industrial workbench, place it on the ground, and with the iron and aluminum your outpost is now farming, you can build as many adaptive frames as you want. Right, next, while we've got plenty of empty space on our base, we're going to build the best huge landing pad, as we can use it to customise our ship any time we land there. There is a smaller landing pad, but it's not really worth building. The large ship builder pad's quite high, so you might want to put it on lower land instead of hills. Press V so you can see it from above, then move it right back to the border ring of your outpost, so it's not taking up valuable space you could use for other stuff. Now you see the stairs, that's the front of your landing pad. So try and have the stairs point into where your outpost buildings will be. I always point it to the centre where the outpost beacon is. Then I know as soon as I get out of the ship, I can just move forward and get to my outpost buildings. Use your jetpack to get on top where you can take the stairs. And on the left hand side, there's a shipbuilder control console. And this lets you customise your ship. But unlike the planet cities, that only have certain parts or weapons, your outpost has most of them in one place. So this is definitely worth getting, as you can mod your ship here easier. Right, next we're doing mineral and resource storage. Find a good place on your land to build it all. Somewhere flat is preferable. Open up your scanner, press R to bring up build. And then you want to go to storage, storage solid. Press V and you'll get an overhead view. Now we've got to plan where we're going to put all our storage crates. I've decided to go on the left side. Nice flat area and I can build to the right. Right, put the first one down. And try and build another crate above it. It does snap too, which is a pain in the butt. But try and get as close as you can. That'll do. Then the next one. Get closer, that'll do. Okay, we've got the main three solid ones built. Almost run out of resources. 
I need to do more adaptive frames. We'll put those in for now. Then you can build them off to the left or right in a row. Right, now we want all the minerals from the extractors to go in those storage crates. Open up your scanner, press R to go build, press V, then press Tab to take away build mode and that puts you in modify mode. Mouse over an extractor and click the right mouse button. That selects it. And it wants you to create an output link to send over resources somewhere. So I've linked it to a storage container and all the minerals will be taken out of the extractor and put in storage. Remember, if you linked it to the wrong place, you can mouse over it and then hold down R and it will delete the link. Or you could delete the storage container and rebuild it if the containers are too close together. And I've shown you that, let's relink it to the right one. So I want all the materials to go into the storage on the left. And this one as well. And the third one. That's all the iron extractors resources go into one place. I don't have enough resources to make the gas storage. So I'm going to link up for aluminium. We'll put that in the second lot containers. Put all the outputs to that one. And third we've got beryllium. There we go, link that up. Now we've got the extractors and power set up, let's expand our storage. All the materials are going to the containers we link to. As you can see they're filling up and they're going to be full soon, so we need to build more. Take the resources out of them because we need them to build. Next go to your workbench and make more adaptive frames. Doing this is also a good source of XP. And if you run out of materials you can always sit down on a chair speed up time, wait for your resource storage to fill up. Then when you've got enough, we can carry on building. Now go into overhead building view again and lay the storage containers out in a line. We're gonna have them all going to the right. Snap is a bit of a pain. You have to drag away to unsnap it. Now we're going to chain link all our storage together. Press tab to go from building mode into modify mode. We have all the materials going into the storage container in the far left. Right click it, then connect it to the storage on its right hand side. That will make all the resources flow from the first container into the second. Then connect the third, fourth, fifth and sixth container. And what will happen is all the materials will go in the container on the left. Then move to the container on the right that it's linked to and we'll keep going until it stops at the end container on the right. So basically we've set it up so everything comes in a container on the left, the materials move across to the right, it will fill the first storage on the right, then once that's full it will fill the second storage on the right, third, fourth, fifth, etc. And if you want to increase your storage just keep adding more containers, then linking them up at the end. All the materials coming into this one, moving all the way down here, filling the far one first, and when that's full it fills the one next to it, to the left. So you just go to the end, grab all the resources and you can make more stuff. Right, let's build a habitat, somewhere we can call home. Find a good area to place it, go to structures, Select the habitat you want. I'm going for the round one. If it's got numbers underneath it, you can click the arrow keys to the left or right and swap the type. All right, you can place it down and then extend it up if you want to have a tall tower. But remember, if you do that, you're gonna have stairs going up, but you've got to climb every time. So I'm gonna have a single glass dome in the center. Then I want an airlock to get in. Look where the stairs are. Let's move it this side. So I can jump off my landing pad and run straight up to it. Go to the airlock doors. And we have a house. With a nice view. You can see our storage. Right, I'm going to demolish my workbench just to save resources. Whenever you delete anything, you get all the resources back, which is quite good. 
bring up the build menu again and go to crafting. I'm going to have a center with crafting benches. Place down the industrial workbench. We're going to start making frames again. Right, next, let's put a bed down to give ourselves 10% XP bonus. That'll do. Let's have a little sleepy. I'll give us time to get more resources. And then on this side, I want a storage box. Again, click the arrow keys to scroll between which type you want. That one's a bit too big, plus it's snapping wrong. Let's change it for a smaller one. And you can keep extra items in here. Right, I've run out of some of the resources which this planet doesn't have, like copper. So I need to go back to the store, buy more. Now we've got enough to make the gas storage. Again, go into overhead building mode, put all the storage in a line and link them up. Then go to the gas extractors and link those up to the first one. And there we go, we've got all the storage finished. It takes a while for the gas storage to fill up, so it's best to use solar panels for each extractor to start with. But once you have built gas storage, you might want to build a fuel generator, and you power this with Helium-3. And each generator supplies 20 power, compared to the solar panel 6. Right, I've landed my ship on the landing pad. This is our base at the moment, looking good. The next thing we're going to build is a cargo link. This is used to send cargo to and from your outposts in the same system. You can build interstellar cargo links later on when you've leveled up. They can send stuff in and out of the system, but they need Helium-3 to be powered, which this planet has, so I'll be able to build it later. You connect all the outgoing resources to the red container on a cargo link to send everything out. Then you connect the green container to empty cargo storage for everything coming in. To be able to transfer your cargo between your outpost and your ship, you will need to build a transfer container. Then, once that's done, connect your end storage containers to the transfer container. Then the materials will be transferred over to there when you need them, so you can move them from your outpost to your ship, so you don't have to mess around carrying them. Or your cargo link if you want to send them off planet. Now we're going to work on the inside of our habitation. You need a crew station to assign crew members to your outpost to help it run better. After that's down, press H to bring up your ship menu, then press C to bring up crew manifest, and you can assign your crew members to your outpost. You can put a self-service bounty clearance console down to clear any bounties you've got. It will save you going to Wolf. And you can also put a mission console down. Then, if you want, you can go to your outpost beacon in the middle of your base. Press R, and you can rename it. Let's call it Nublet's Outpost 1. And that's the essentials to set your base up as a beginner very early on in game when you're low level. Now I'm going to skip forward till I'm a higher level on the first base I built here originally. Here's a tip. I put all the solar panels together and linked them all up as a power cell, as I wanted it nice and neat. But all the extractors that are too far away never got any power, and never farmed anything. That's why it's best to put the solar panels right next to the extractor. Here's another good tip you'll like. Your ship's cargo will get full all the time, and it's a pain carrying everything around. And if you put more and more cargo storage on your ship, its mass will go up and it'll slow down. So one of the best reasons to build an outpost is to just build a line of storage containers to empty everything out from your cargo, especially all the resources you'll end up carrying. You'll need four types of storage to hold everything. Solid storage for mineral resources. Liquid storage for liquid items. Gas storage for gas items. Then warehouse or storage boxes for any constructed items like components, spacesuits or weapons. When you have all the empty storage set up, you can keep emptying your ship's cargo and have a less stressful game.
build over workbenches and a research lab in your outpost. Then you'll be able to research new stuff for your base. For some of the stuff though, you'll need to put points into skills. You can research a simple fabricator that will constantly make items as long as it's got resources to do so. Just place it down. I've got other minerals going to a transfer container. So if I go to that and link it to the simple fabricator, then go to the fabricator controls, I can select which item it'll constantly make. Then if you go around the side, you can pick those items up. However, I would kind of avoid doing this because it doesn't seem that you get any XP for doing it. I would avoid using it and use a workbench instead as that's guaranteed XP over time. To defend your outpost, you can put turrets down. There's different types. You can also have robots in your base. There's more options to unlock when you research them. The scan booster boosts the range of your scanner when you're in range of it. It would be okay to help you find all the resources in your plot of land before you got your extractors down. But once you got your outpost built, I don't really see the point of it. If you need more room or make a special room, you can expand your habitation unit. Just bring up a build menu, go to the side of your existing habitat and put a new one down you want. I've chose a bunker as it'll be nice and dark for my bedroom. Let's go and decorate the insides. I put the essential workbenches down I had the resources for. Plus the research console. At the back I put loads of storage to keep all the extra items out of my cargo bay of my ship. I think I'll leave this area for plants. Then we're going to the bedroom bunker. Placing stuff like the sofa, paintings, desks, etc. is just done normally with a build menu. Open up your scanner, press R. Right, we're looking for a bed. Need somewhere to sleep. There we go. Now press the arrow keys to select your bed you want. That's the best I've found up to now. Stick it in the back. All right, that looks okay. In the corner. Let's have a display case. Put that in. There we go, that'll do nicely. Now all the other junk on the floor, all the plushes etc, I picked these up, stole them when I was doing missions. To place them in the base, all you've got to do is bring up your inventory, select the item you want in your base, then drop them. Then you open your scanner again, press R and bring up your build menu, then press tab to go to modify menu, and with it you can modify sections of your base. Right, let's have a window there. I could move a bed or delete it if I wanted. It's easy enough, just point at everything you want to change. Right, let's arrange a room. Point at the plushie you want. Click on it. Pick it up. Left and right mouse button to rotate. And you can place any object wherever you want or on other objects, like the desk or bed. And this is how you arrange your room how you want it. How's it look? Got plenty of teddies. And that's how you decorate your room. Now we get onto the best planets. Like I said, I spent hours going around to every system and scanning every planet with all the main resources to build your outpost around Alpha Centauri. I did that so you'd be able to get to them even early on in game when you've got a basic grav drive. Okay, here's all the best planets. I'll start from Alpha Centauri so you can see where to go. Go to the Feynman system in the bottom right and go to the planet Feynman 4. And this is helium 3, aluminum, chlorine, iron, argon, and benzene. Aluminum and iron are essential on every planet, but this one's missing some like copper and tungsten. No planet has all the resources, but some are much better than others. Next we're going up to the top left, to Alpha Andraste. We're going to Alpha Andraste 2. This is Helium 3, Aluminum, Chlorine, Iron, Beryllium and Tantalum, I think. 
Now we're going on the top right to Nicola. Go to Nicola 1. We have aluminum, iron, argon, beryllium, alkanes, tantalum, and carbolic acids. Now we arguably get onto the best two. Probably my favourite because it's got a lot of resources on, plus the planets around it's got almost everything else, is in the Lianus system. Then go to Lianus 4b. And it's got helium, aluminum, iron, lead, beryllium, alkanes, and yetabium, maybe. And finally, the planet where you can get the most XP on by building, because it's got one of the biggest time dilations. So when you wait or go to sleep, much more time passes than normal, so your base forms more materials for you, is bezel in the top left. Then go to bezel 3b. Now it doesn't have helium 3, so you can't put an interstellar transporter on it. However, it has aluminum, nickel, iron, argon, cobalt, platinum, and neon. It may be the best outpost to get XP and level up on, but it's out away in the top left, and the rest of the planets in that system don't have the other resources you're missing. It might be meta, but that's usually boring instead of doing your own thing. Personally, I think Lianus 4b is better, as it's in the middle of a system, it's got all the basic resources you want, then some, and the rest of the planets in that system have most of whatever else you need. I think this planet's the best one to build your starting outpost on, and I would build here for my first base. But it's up to you, you can build wherever you like. And remember, unlike Androphon, the planet I built my tutorial base on, which has only two land masses, mountains or craters. So finding a border where they meet up is quite easy. These better planets with more resources have three, four or five land masses. So finding the edges where all those meet up is going to be a lot more tricky. That's why I showed you what to do on a nice simple basic planet. Later on in the game you'll be able to build on extreme weather planets and they usually have the most resources, so they're even better than these. But you need to spec points into skills to do that. If this video was helpful please like, it'd be nice if you subscribe if you haven't already, and click the bell notifications and all to get notified when I upload next. It would help a lot if you shared the link for this video, I stream at a weekend so it'd be nice if you come and watched, and don't forget to check out the other videos at the end. Thank you very much for watching, goodbye and I hope you have a good day.